Hi all. Our instructive game today will have the theme of the tempo losing bishop. So to demonstrate this theme, I'm choosing another game from the British Championship of last year, Nicholas Pert playing against Jacob Agard. So Pert played d4, and Agard chose to try and play the Nimzo Indian defence, but White steered away from the mainline Nimzo Indian by first delaying c4, and now after e6, c4, b6, Nicholas Pert did actually transpose back into a kind of hybrid system between the Nimzo and the Queen's Indian defence by playing knight c3. So after bishop b4, White now played bishop g5. And it's this bishop on g5 which actually provides the central theme of the game, how this bishop was masterfully exploited. After bishop b7, Black is trying to exert control over e4, and why often in this system <clears throat> will retreat this knight from f3 to d2 in order to play f3 and e4, so contesting white's control of e4. So this next move by Nicholas Pert seems to have a good logical plan to it of fighting for that e4 square. The drawback is that this bishop is in pre now, and it's in the opponent's territory, and it provides a convenient tactical target for Jacob Agard. He first kicks it with h6 and it goes to h4. And now, Agard improves, I believe, on a previous encounter which um, has been annotated by Capablanca. See um, the notes for this game. But um, Agard, instead of um, playing in that game, he, he deviates now with knight c6. So he had lost to Nicholas Pert in 2002, I believe. And this innovation, knight c6, aims to exploit that bishop on h4. So after e3, Agard now plays knight e7. So he's got this path of playing knight f5 to further gain tempo on the bishop. Maybe Nicholas Pert wasn't too concerned because he now plays f3 with his positional idea of contesting the e4 square and tucking his bishop now on the f2 square. So it seems okay if white later um, opens up the position or expands in the centre with e4. So this bishop will again be liberated and useful. It also supports the d4 pawn, so it all doesn't seem to be that bad. After c5, Agard is increasing the pressure on these dark squares, and in particular the d4 square. Queen c2 was played, and after castling, White now played what I believe is a clear mistake. White played d5, and this allows Black to wrench open the e-file, but not immediately, because e takes d5, queen takes f5. White wins a whole piece. So... Um, First, though, Agard still used the e-file and this, and this mechanism by playing a fantastic move now. Can you spot it? I'll give you five seconds, starting from now. The move Agard played was the spectacular knight sacrifice. Knight takes e3. And after this, White had a very difficult position to play. Um, bishop takes e3 was played, and after e takes d5... Black now has to resource rook e8 with a horrible pin on white's king still trapped in the centre, as well as the threat immediately of playing d4. So it's against this threat of immediately playing d4 that um, Nicholas Pert plays bishop f2, and after rook e8 check, he now plays knight e2. So is this that bad for white? Agar proves it is, because he plays an ingenious move again. Instead of playing d4, which would, would give white an advantage, for example, d, d4 castle's queenside, and black's pawn mobility is constrained because of these double pawns. For example, <clears throat> bishop c6, knight b3, and white's better according to Rivka. So as, if white can blockade these pawns, that's fine. It's this pawn mass which a Agard really maximises. So after this bishop f2, he, he plays check, and now he plays d takes, and white castled queenside. So Agard played d takes, and now he reinforces that pawn. If white had taken here, so say after castles b5, but instead of that, if white had done queen takes c4, then there's the variation d5 followed by d4, and these pawns are much more mobile, and black has access to this d5 square. So a variation like this would clearly favour black, even though a piece down. These pawns are extremely dangerous for all the central control. So this is one example um, idea from black. So d3, 
and the pawns are still coming down with very dangerous effects. And white's pieces are just totally uncoordinated. The rooks are not connected, and black's better, according to Pribka. So, in the game, after d takes c4, white castled queenside, and Agard played b5. And now there's a fantastic variation with a3, which I must show you. So this didn't happen in the game, but say bishop a5, then bishop takes c5. And say bishop takes d2 here. Then uh, white would still be worse, but it's not as bad as this continuation with a5. Now this is just totally brilliant. These pawns would be an absolutely amazing block, powerful block. Not only allowing black access to the A file with dangerous threats, but these pawns will get more and more dangerous as they advance. And here is one fantastic variation with the pawns. So the pawns would be um, like space invaders coming down here. So after D4, C4, Ribka starts to assess this as clearly winning for black. This kind of position where blacks are threatening still to avalanche white with moves like B3. And if um, bishop takes C4, queen C7 here. So this would be a completely crushing position, this kind of variation. So maybe, you know, Nicholas put, he thought Agard might play a5 if a3. He didn't bother with that. He played actually in this position, knight c3. And after bishop c6, he now sacrificed a piece to get rid of these pawns, two of them. But still Agard had a lot of pressure. So he played d5. And after bishop h4, we see this tempo losing bishop, which has caused all these problems. Still not being able to, to rescue this situation now, because black plays an ingenious move again, queen b8. And now if bishop takes f6, then there's queen f4 check, not with the idea of queen f6, but actually queen takes c4, taking away all the pressure on d5. And black's um, got this bishop now. For example, b3, queen f4, and where is this bishop going? It's being munched. So that would be clearly winning for black. So after this queen b8, the bishop actually humbly went back to g3, allowing queen b7, reinforcing d5. So again, Agard has just a massive position here. And he finished the game off with quite a few good forcing moves now. So rook a c8, and after bishop h4, he took on c3, and now played c4. So he's playing a lot of forcing moves. I think it's called hard pressing, Kasparov would call it, where you play lots of forcing moves in a row. And now rook b8, threatening queen b2, mate. So white has to go back to defend now. And now queen e7, threatening queen a3 check. So white defends with rook d2. But now check anyway. And now d4. So temporarily, if bishop takes f6, then d3 is crushing. So let's have a look at that. Bishop takes f6, d3, and it's all over because of this menacing threat of queen a4 check. So this bishop has proven to be completely useless for white, this dark squared bishop, and a, a cause of lots and lots of trouble. In this position after d4, white took with the pawn. If rook takes d4, then rook b2 is crushing. So white took with the pawn, and now knight d5 with terrible threats of knight e3 and knight c3. Nicholas Putt had enough. He resigned. Let's have a look in this game at overview and summary. So the Nimzo engine stroke Queen's engine was played, a hybrid, with this bishop being a terrible target for gaining lots and lots of tempo, not just with this knight manoeuvre to f5, but also later, because white played d5, the bishop was again in trouble, this time on the e-file. So black wrenched open that e-line, and had this mass of pawns now after d takes. White dare not take that because of a fast d5 and d4. And instead, black had this terrible pawn mass, which white had to like sacrifice a piece to get, to get rid of. But this bishop was still quite pathetic after queen b8. Tactically, just blacks all, you know, got the upper hand still. So um, was able to reinforce that d5 pawn, and now force the issue with a sequence of forcing moves leading to a crushing knight d5 and that was it so the source of white's troubles had been this temper losing bishop right from the opening i hope you enjoyed that please leave any comments on youtube thanks very much